Hello, and thank you for joining America's Warrior Partnership. As we talk with veterans about their journey transitioning from military service to law enforcement. America's Warrior Partnership's mission is to partner with communities to end veteran suicide. We've put together a special fireside chat with law enforcement personnel who will share their experiences of finding purpose and continuing their service post-military. These conversations may have a tendency to bring up feelings and open old wounds. If you or someone you love are experiencing thoughts of harming themselves, please contact the Veteran Crisis Line by dialing 988 or texting 838-255. I encourage you to leverage resources as they are appropriate for you and know that you are not alone. Do you guys have any kind of comments or anything else that you that we haven't said that you want to say to another person, you know, watching this video? I got, I got one. Seeing mental health, okay, um, medicine and pills. I don't think that that's the first thing that you should go for, you know, when you're having mental issues. Uh, and I say this because. In 2000, uh, I care, my all, all everything comes together. 2016, I went to see mental health. Uh, like I had to, I was in Korea. And my son was deployed at that time. As, um, I was thinking a lot, so I went and asked for mental health. Well, they're not prepared in Korea, especially in Garrison, I think, to see, uh, see some veterans there a lot. You know, so I went and talked to, there was no, they, they cannot, they couldn't find anybody to talk to, to come and talk to me. And it was, it was, it was, it was pretty bad that they brought the specialist to talk to me and I just given the knife hand, you know how that goes, the zero sign hand, I just went off and I feel so bad. My wife had to hold me like, that's not your soul. And I like, all right. So he got up and went and found a. I don't know what the difference between a psychologist and psychiatrist is. Anyhow, I went and talked to this lady. I saw that they found somebody. I went and talked to her and she goes, I'm gonna prescribe you this and this and that, and then take him and come back. Less than five minutes that I talked to her. I said, what's my name? She like, no, stop. I said, what is my freaking name? Uh, I, I, I said, exactly, you don't even know my name. And you're ready to prescribing me these pills? I said, this is what's going on with you, with you people. Instead of actually listening to, I probably just needed somebody to talk to me, slap me around and say, you're going to be all right. But no, less than five minutes, she described me all this freaking poison. Okay. I think somebody needs to look into that. And I got, I got a lot of buddies that are on the pill. We call it the juice. You don't. I believe that a lot of them don't need it. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I tell you, talking is the best medicine I've gotten so far. Okay, this right here, talking to you guys, I'm crying inside right now because it helps me. Okay, because not a lot of people call me, even though I call I call a lot of people, but I think the ones that that want to call me, they're like, "Well, he called me already, so I'm not calling him back." So you know, but talking. Talking is the best medicine. Yeah, I'm not put on the pills, but like I said, I, there's there's a lot that don't that shouldn't have and don't need any pills. The easiest way for these doctors and pharmaceutical companies is just to throw it out there, throw it out there, and uh, see what happens. You know, that, that that's that's the last thing I got. Sorry, I can talk all day. I can talk all day. So, yes, that's what I got. Well, I'll go ahead and I, and what I would like to just share is that don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, a lot of times, and I think Sherry might have had mentioned something about um, when you're in a clinical environment, or you know, I've I've gotten so much information by talking to other veterans just by sitting down at the hospital at the VA waiting for a prescription to be filled. To be filled. 
I've had so much many conversations with other veterans about different things that that may be going on in their lives or maybe going on in my life and and sharing information. Don't be afraid to share information with other veterans um whether they're getting um the the treatment um um from the VA whether they have um submitted any type of um claims to get some type of compensation and I always push veterans especially after I find out that they've been in they're veteran they've served um and they're not getting compensated in any um type of way and I shared with them that you earned that. You know, you serve your country for this amount of years, that amount of years. You, you're a veteran. You know, you you earned that right to um, get compensated. Um, and so, don't be afraid to to reach out to other veterans. Um, and if you if you're seeking help and you need help, um, don't hold it in. I did that for years, and I think it's helped me tremendously. Just by being able to have somebody to, to talk to about some of the issues that I have been dealing with. I, I echo once again, uh, Coolip and, and, and James, um, if you're still in the military and you're, you're, you're ETSing or you're looking to change a career, stick with it, keep with your, your helping careers, but also look for the help. Um, if you're on the job right now as a police officer, don't be afraid. Um, I'm going to steal, uh, Dave Augusta, he's a Lawrence, a retired Lawrence police officer of the city, which I grew up in here in Massachusetts. Um, he talks about unmade beds. Um, if you need help um, and you start looking or moving towards being the unmade bed, you know, drinking, waking up late, not showing up for work, calling out sick, recognize that in yourself. Ask for help. Um, when I go out and do classes, I always say, you know, if you've got a friend, come, you know, call me. I will point you in the right direction because I've been through it. I'm not afraid. So seek help. You have a long life ahead of you. You you were in the military for a reason. You know, the jokes about the getting the college fund and the GI Bill. Yeah, but you are a helper. You love you must love your country. Um, and moving on to helping professions, whether it is a police officer, whether it's a firefighter, whether it's um being a social worker, whatever it is, you've got something. Um past your military career as as cool it shows you he's, he's re retired he, he keeps that service going um like james also we keep that service going but we've got to take care of ourselves uh in the meanwhile we can't be afraid of taking care of ourselves because we have a job to do and we've got a, a life to live and whatever role you have it means something to someone if not a whole bunch of people i really appreciate you guys um, talking with me today and, and, and sharing your stories and sharing your, your experience and the things that helped you to get where you are today. And I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing this. I got one more thing. I'm doing a, on Memorial Day, I'm doing a 10 mile from my house to the courthouse and watch in the bomb suit. So and that usually it's just me because I, I, live, I live in the middle of nowhere. My wife's the one that used to follow me. And then I get one of the deputies to, to go with the truck just so I don't, I don't get hit. <laughs> but um, I do it since I got, since I retired, I do it, I do it uh, on Memorial Day, Veterans Day, 9-11, and um, uh, Purple Heart, Purple Heart Day. And I think I'm going to start doing it uh, for cancer, cancer day. So, but uh, the one that's coming up, is uh, Memorial Day, so you know, and I never, I never asked anybody to come join me. So, actually, my son is doing it. He said, "Dad, I'm doing it with you this year." So, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I started zero six. You want to get the uh, from Richmond County out here? <laughs> <laughs> you can start at midnight. I'd be with you. That bomb suit's a little too heavy, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I will still get it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see yeah, how you go. Yeah, hey, you got my support, you know. Yeah, I, I, you got my support, but I'll just I'll be in prayer with you though. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll drive behind you. I have no problem driving behind you. <laughs> it's just a little pain. You'll go away after you you have some of them Tylenols. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's happening. <laughs>